Okay, so we're just going to quickly look at um, some automation now. This is exactly the same uh, demo song that I was uh, using in the aux tracks and routing video. Same song. You know the one with the with the echo. Um, and what I'm going to do now is show you a different way of getting the same kind of response out of this echo without having to do the compression and the side chaining because side chaining is quite an advanced concept to try and get your head around. So what I'm going to do quickly is just to reset this and show you how I can reset this quickly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these tracks and quickly select one of the buses and go no send and it will turn all of them off. So I turn all these sends off and what I can then do is get rid of those two tracks by selecting them and hitting the backspace key because there's nothing selected to them anymore. This G and O fader, I can quickly select those two and go select stereo output so then I can get rid of that fader as well. So we're back to how we started before we started routing anything. So what I'm going to do now is show you how we can quickly um, automate a send. Now I'm just going to want to have, for example, the... Uh, delay back again. So I'll just show you quickly how we can automate just during one channel. So what I'm going to do is select that echo back. I'm going to put it back on uh, quarter note delay. And what I want is for the for the delay only to happen really at the, at the tail end of the word. So So I essentially want to do what I've just done, which is to turn it up just at the end, but I I want that to do it for me all the time so that's what automation is really it's, it's getting something to happen automatically or, or in, in an automated fashion now there's lots you can automate you can automate all the panning all the volume you can automate all the effects parameters all the sends so you can automate how much gets sent to the echo you can um, pan the echo return you can automate all the EQ parameters so if you wanted uh, a filter effect sweeping down you can automate that you can automate a cut at a certain frequency to try and get rid of plosives or squeaks or bumps or something without being detrimental to the rest of the track and having to have that EQ in all the time for example so there's lots you can do with automation I'm just going to get rid of the mixer by hitting X and I'm just going to get the automation window open by hitting A for automation and this is going to show you uh, what we can do uh, I'm just going to go into the vocal channel and hit Z, which is going to auto zoom that in. And I'm just going to go control and use the arrows just to zoom in a little bit. Now, what we get is we get this line across and we get a kind of the audio. The audio files are in the background now, so we, we can't actually select the audio files like we could before. What we actually select now are points along this uh, this line. So just looking on this uh, vocal channel at the moment uh, we've got various things going on um, where it says read that says read because I started to point uh, lines along it and what it will do is it will read the points and will actually uh, work along the, this line and do what you tell it to do uh, you can turn it off so it won't read anything uh, you can set it to touch and latch which are mainly useful if you've got a hardware controller that can um, control the level with a fader movement or a pop movement for example and write which we can essentially leave it open and you'll write all the information at once which can be quite dangerous um, I tend to just use read and write it in actually um, what this uh, section here, here is where it says volume this is what it's displaying so at the moment it's displaying displaying volume automation so I could draw a couple of points along here and fade in and fade out so I could fade this section out and I'll just play what happens and you can you watch the fader so we can fade out I'm just going to undo those points because I'm going to show you uh, as I told you I would with the uh, logic introduction video I told you I'd use uh, the marquee to tool to show you quick quick uses of automation so I'm just going to zoom into this section and I'm going to want to turn this just this section of audio up. So let's say for, for the sake of argument that I just want to turn this up. Now what, what you used to have to do was to click a point here, then click a point here, click a point here so that it was the same level again, click a point here, and then you turn this one up, and then you turn that one up, and then you listen to it. Uh, no more do we need to do that because we can use the marquee tool now holding down alt uh, sorry command and dragging around the section I want if I then click and drag up that 
does all those points for me so I can quickly make adjustments. So I can quickly make adjustments to any section I want. So for example, if I wanted this point here to be slightly quieter, I can just do that. So we can quickly make adjustments uh, in that way. Now, sometimes you'll find that you'll end up with lots of uh, automation moves like this kind of thing, and you might end up with points to just pull out certain phrases and certain sections might be a bit loud, so you'll have this kind of thing. And you wanna grab the whole lot. Now, if I try and rubber band the whole lot, you'll notice that it draws a whole new point and I can't actually do that. So this is where some of the other tools that I told you I was gonna talk about come in. So if I actually use the automation select tool, that one will actually let me select those points, at which point I can drag all of them up or down and I can move them left and right. Now what we've also got, which is another funky tool, is the automation curve tool, which is where if we've got a longer section, not even a longer section, but just I'm just gonna use this to show you. If we use the curve tool, we can click anywhere in that line and actually start to make curves and S curves and sinusoidal curves. Now these actually sound a lot more realistic and natural to our ears than a straight linear line. So that's why a lot of these have been that these have been um, introduced into Logic's uh, automation window. So we can be really quite uh, naturalistic as to how how the volume envelope changes. So that's some of the extra extra moves we can do. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, Go back to zero for that just put it back to where it was because i'm now going to show you some of the other other things we can automate so that was just the volume now um, in fact i'm just going to put that back because when i go to something else like pan you'll notice that the volume display stays in the background so we can still see it faintly but now we've got a new line that's um, the kind of active layer and this is the panning so what we can do is we can actually pan from left to right by doing this kind of thing. And you'll notice that um, the pan wheel will actually move as we do this. And you can hear it panning around. So that's a quick way of panning. Uh, useful for guitars, for example. You can, you can split things apart. You can get things to move across the stereo image. I like to pan my guitars, especially if you've got one guitar playing a, a, a section and then it doubles up. You can pan them apart and have it in the middle for when it plays on its own. Um, so these are the ones that are always there. Uh, you've got the main window, so we've got volume pan, solo. I've yet to automate a solo. Um, quite dangerous, actually. Uh, you can automate mutes, though, very quickly. I can just mute a section. When it's at the top, it's on. And when it's at the bottom, it's muted. So we can just mute sections of audio. It's uh, a slightly less destructive way of... Um, getting rid of sections of audio uh, another way to do it would be obviously to literally select that section and just hit m um, but you can ex you can experiment doing either way really so back to the automation window just going to go back to the volume now now that i've shown you that that stays in the background um, so again on the main window we can send to aux one and we've got the inserts the bypass of the inserts that are active now, just to show you that this will update, if I create a new send here in this main window now, this will update to show me send two as well. So this this window, this main window, updates to whatever you've got active in that channel strip uh, and will only bypass those effects. So if you want to quickly bung in a, a delay and then bypass it again, this is how you can do this here. So I'm going to quickly show you now how you can automate that send. So we can just go into this um, in this that setting and select what we want. So I'm going to select uh, my send one. I'm going to make sure it's on read. And what we can do is at the moment the send is set to zero. So it's right at the bottom here. So I can just take a couple of points. And I can ramp that send up when I want to hear it. So now we should see that the bus turns up and we should get the delay just for certain bits. Okay, so you can set it on there or we can do it just at the end section. So I'm just going to zoom in here, select my uh, points. And 
ramp it up for that certain section. So you can see that we've got the same kind of effect um, that we did before using the compressor, but just sending uh, a certain amount as and when we want it. So we can do uh, all kinds of things using that, that um, send window uh, in the automation. Notice here that you've got um, a parameter, set parameters for the two plugins. So we can actually e uh, automate all the compressor plugins. Uh, so we can change the, the gain or the limiter or the mix output so we can progressively add more um, parallel compression for example we can change the circuit type halfway through so we can have a different circuit type for the verse as the chorus so this really does open things up to have really dynamic mixes uh, you can change the channel EQ so you can actually have dynamic EQ so you can EQ sections out uh, like I was saying you can quickly just cut frequencies just for one section of the of the of the um, of the verse. If I actually went to uh, the channel EQ and said uh, low cut frequency, at the moment it's set to 132 hertz, which we can say here because it's 132 hertz. If I actually put this off and then put it up here to 6 hertz, what we're going to do is we're going to have a nice filter sound. Well, not really nice, but you can see the possibilities. You can mix a whole track through a filter, basically, and you can get that kind of Daft Punk filtering, filtering drums kind of sound. If we did that on the drums, it would have sounded even better. Um, so you can notch out certain certain frequencies only when they happen. For example, if, if someone's popped or burped down the microphone or something. So you can really, really can automate just about everything. Uh, and then we can turn the display off for independent channels. Um, so that's automation really in a nutshell. Uh, there's not much more to say about it um, other than use it a lot because it makes mixes sound so much better and more natural. Um, there's only so far that compression can go to get a, a, a static mix sound. Um, it's always going to sound better if you automate your vocal throughout. Um, and also guitars uh, will always come in and out up and down keyboards uh, even drums uh, you know if there's a if there's a fill in you can push the fill in so that the toms get even louder for that section to add that little bit of extra something um, so I always leave automation to the end because as you can see as soon as you've put um, points in it's going to read them from now on so if I have this on read and I move my fader down it's going to read wherever it's set to um, so I always do it as the last thing. Um, just just be aware of that fact. Get your get your mix sounding really good without it, and then make it sound great with it. Um, one last point: if you've got lots of complex automation, um, just for the sake of it, I'm just going to put a few points in, and say that was our mix and it sounded great. Um, a lot of people have been moaning the fact that Logic doesn't have a dedicated trim automation, which was how a lot of old desks used to work. You could trim the automation so you could keep all the automation moves, but literally trim the fader so you could turn it down or turn it up and keep all the automation data. And lots of people said, oh, well, you know, I can't turn it all up once I've done all this without moving all the points, um, or I have to send it to another bus just to then automate that extra fader. It's a load of rubbish because you've got this little yellow fader here. If you um, hold down command and drag this, it will move all the points, even if there are hundreds of points all over the place. It will drag them all with respect to one another. So you can hold down command, drag that up. So you could do a mix set to zero, and then you could say, right, I'm going to do a mix set to plus half dB as well. So I now know that that vocal is one half dB louder across the board. So I could bounce two different mixes, one with it up half a dB, simple. Um, so there you go, you've got trim automation in there as well. Um, so that's automation, have fun with it, um, experiment. There's lots you can do, so sky's the limit. Have fun.